Welcome aboard the Martha Washington. Come ahead on board. Step aboard. Captain David Robinson not only loves piloting his tour boat down the waterways of Richmond. And that's how Richmond got its name, named after Richmond, England. This particular one was an original David Robinson find. This he also loves all things Virginia, especially Martin. his stamps. I have some stamps here from the Confederacy, and this is the first Confederate stamp. It had Jefferson Davis's picture on it. He first started collecting at the age of 10. What made you stick with it? Uh, girls. <laughs> girls? Because I found, wow. <laughs> I found that I could make money buying and selling stamps, and the having of money translated into the geeky kid being able to get the girl. Had money to take her out. Absolutely. He's been collecting ever since, and recently made his biggest find ever. But the story really begins in 1918, when the U.S. Postal Service issued a stamp in honor of the Jenny, a World War I-era biplane. The stamp was red and blue. And they printed one with the blue upside down. One sheet? One sheet. Those stamps are now worth millions and far out of reach for people like David Robinson. But in 2013, the U.S. Postal Service decided to commemorate its most famous mistake, purposely issuing a new upside-down Jenny stamp. And then the Postal Service did something really tricky. They announced they printed 100 with the airplane right side up. And those, of course, became the ones to have. Yes. And uh, all of a sudden, the stamp collecting world is shaken upside down. So David Robinson wanted one, badly. If you're going to open them the correct way, which is sort of slowly and savor the experience, you got to get it out of the plastic first. So then you got to get the cardboard. You got to dispense <laughs> with the cardboard. He ended up spending almost $41,000 on sheets of Jenny's. Yeah. Not a winner. No cigar. And you did this 2,000? 2,900 times. That's when Robinson finally struck gold, finding a sheet of right-side-up Jenny's. And he sold it at auction for $45,000 to an anonymous buyer. I beat the odds. Please. Of course, Robinson is part of a proud tradition of stamp collecting. Once upon a time, stamp collectors, known as philatelists, seemed to be everywhere. In New York and across the nation, first sales of the new three-cent stamp celebrating the movie's 50th anniversary. And everywhere it's a field day for the stamp collectors. The 1963 film Charade even features Cary Grant, the stamps, there was a fortune, what? and Audrey Hepburn on a desperate search for lost, rare stamps. There are still die-hard collectors and some budding ones, but it's clear the hobby has lost a bit of its luster, which seems a shame to this man. I think American stamps tell the story of the American experience. Patrick Donahoe is Postmaster General of the United States. If you go back to the first postage stamps, uh, Washington and Franklin, uh, the founding fathers of our country, probably around the turn of the century, 1900, we started issuing what's called commemorative stamps, and that's where we got into the history of the U.S. And now we've evolved over time into culture and even things like birds and flowers. The story of American stamps is on display at the Smithsonian's National Postal Museum in Washington, D.C. So I know there's a very important stamp that you're going to show me in here. Yes, the number one seller of all times. And here it is, Elvis <laughs> Presley. When it went on sale in 1993... There it is. Crowds went wild. The Elvis stamp tattoo right there, ladies and gentlemen. Elvis may be the king of stamps, but the gallery where he sits in state was funded by the king of stamp collectors, billionaire Bill Gross. He's a co-founder of the global investment firm PIMCO. So important, he made headlines a few months ago 
just for changing jobs. But when it's time to relax... My Saturdays and Sundays were always stamp collecting with uh, sports programs, and so I... Well, I you'd I, sit there with your collection and you'd be watching TV? Yeah, and <laughs> hopefully not get too excited <laughs> and rip up one of the stamps. He sold many of his stamps and given the money to charity, but acknowledges spending more than $100 million on his hobby over the years. Your aim was seriously to collect a copy of every single stamp that the U.S. put out in the 19th century, every single one. Yes. And how many were there? Well, um, there's probably 350 to 400 in, in total. That includes this one, issued in 1868. Doesn't look that interesting, does it? But only two exist in the whole world. And he also got his hands on a more recent rarity that might look familiar. Remember that anonymous buyer of David Robinson's big find? This one, that, as you can tell, is uh, right side up. And uh, so I call it the inverted inverted. That's right. Bill Gross was the winning bidder. Did I know what it was worth? Absolutely not. Um, I, I simply knew that maybe at some point uh, it could, could be worth 100000 <laughs> Please accept my thanks for letting me show off the greatest city in America. Thanks for coming out. David Robinson, back captaining his boat, doesn't care if Gross makes a profit off the deal. For him and his wife, it's not really about the money. We're famous. Gail and I are written into philatelic history now. Our picture was on the front page of Lynn's Stamp News. For someone like you, this is a really big deal. It's the pinnacle of... of of stamp collecting is to make an original discovery like this and basically every stamp collector in the world for a few weeks. I want to be him. 